The AirPods Pro 2 are the latest and highest end model of Apple's earbud lineup, and now it's in a market of truly wireless audio that is more crowded than ever. So what does Apple do to make their latest Pro model stand out? Well, we're going to talk about that because it's Joshua Vergar. What's going on, everybody? Here's what worked and what didn't with the Apple AirPods Pro 2. Okay, it's not surprising that Apple stuck with the, let's face it, sterile, all-white look again, but I do have to start with that. I know that this means the AirPods Pro 2 continue to be one of the most recognizable truly wireless earbuds out there, but still, it would be really nice to get a splash of color, at least at some point. The case is still glossy and smooth, housing a number of different features that I will get to a little bit later. The earbuds themselves retain the basically same design as the previous AirPods Pro, with the stem that makes them even more obvious and recognizable. If anything, the white color just means that when these get dirty, whether it's because of the elements or, let's say, stuff from your ears, it actually really shows. And I don't know if you can really see it in the video, but my case already has some scratches on it if you look hard enough. To protect that case and to get some style in on the AirPods Pro 2, you can actually use a grip case from the sponsor of this video, dbrand. It's a full-on case that will protect the entire package from drops and scratches, and there are areas on the case that take the various skins that dbrand make for the AirPods Pro 2, letting you inject some actual much-needed color. The skin that I'm using right now is actually their new release, the Digital Camo in Glitch, and the grip case still provides access to all of the various bits, from the charging port, to the button on the back, to the new speaker, to the built-in tether loop, the lanyard loop. If you're rocking the AirPods Pro 2, you can get this case and various skins by visiting my link to dbrand's products in the description and in the pinned comment below. Hitting those links helps me out a bunch, so please consider doing so, and thanks again to dbrand for sponsoring this video. Now, I was just mentioning them, so let's talk about how the case actually has some new bits. It still has all the features you would want from a premium pair of wireless earbuds, from properly nesting the earbuds to charging up wirelessly, but now both of these scenarios are supported by, respectively, a lanyard loop that is built in and an actual speaker here on the bottom. Now, in all honesty, I don't use tethers like this very often, but clearly Apple saw that there was a demand for it, perhaps based on third-party accessories providing them for the previous generation AirPods Pro. The speaker here on the bottom, though, is way more interesting for me because I originally thought it was going to be a superfluous feature, yet it has come in very handy. One of the obvious reasons why this is a good addition is because it'll blare out when you hit the Find My application so you can locate the case and the earbuds, and both the case and each individual earbud will now ring out a chime to help you find them. I literally had to do this because I tend to have just one earbud in at any point, and at one point I forgot where I put the rest of the stuff. The other chimes that come from the speaker include the charging sound, which you get whenever you plug in or you set the case on a wireless charger. I thought the speaker might be a bit of a nuisance because, after all, sound in a pair of truly wireless earbuds should just be coming out of, well, the earbuds. But the chimes are low in volume and they're intermittent enough that they're really not invasive or intrusive at all. That chime confirming wireless charging is probably my favorite because it makes it clear that I've put them down just right and that I'm replenishing some much needed battery life. But wireless charging is the main way that I charge the AirPods Pro 2 because, let's face it, a proprietary lightning port in a sea of USB-C cables and chargers is just not the business. I want to say that I kind of get it, because if you're all in on the Apple ecosystem, you probably have at least the cable that came with your phone and probably a few others, but for someone like me that lives the USB-C life way more, it's just it just feels like a chore. So thankfully wireless charging is useful on here, because as long as I have wireless chargers or power banks near me, at least I have an out. I don't have to use this port. Anyway, tiny rant over, let's finally get these earbuds out. As I mentioned before, the earbuds have basically the same design as the last generation. There's this proprietary silicone ear tip system connected to a rather bulbous main body uh, that houses a skin sensor and then an air vent. And finally, you have the stem that gives you access to all of the controls. As is the case with basically any earbud, fit and feel will be different for every person. And I know plenty of people who just can't get their AirPods, uh, whatever version they are, to stay in their ears. So as always, your mileage will vary. For me though, I have like the most average ears of all time, so the AirPods Pro 2 anchor in my ears and basically never come out. I've not done any particularly rigorous activity with them, which they should be able to handle for the most part with the IPX4 rating, but like running errands, taking long walks outside, and even lying down with the AirPods Pro 2 have never resulted in a dropped earbud. I mean, I do have to adjust their positioning in my ear from time to time just to re-secure them, but the stem seems to weigh and anchor things down just right still, and the earbuds are honestly really comfortable for me. 
I've even fallen asleep with one in my ear multiple times recently and I've woken up with it still inserted. The only time that I might have felt some discomfort is when I lie down directly on that ear, but even then, it's not terrible. The other reason why these are just so easy to leave in for me is uh, that air vent. I'm going to dive further into the sound modes later, but with the transparency mode on and nothing playing, I virtually have no discomfort. I can interact with the world or the people around me. The AirPod then just ends up being like an accessory in and of itself, hardly ever requiring removal. After all, I can do basically everything from the one earbud. And that is certainly because of the stem, which now includes swipe sensitivity so that volume control can actually be achieved. This is kind of a big deal because it completes the control suite. You pinch to pause, you pinch twice to skip, you pinch three times to go to the previous track or whatever the case may be, then you long pinch, you just hold to change the sound mode, and now you swipe to raise or lower the volume. That's basically everything you would want to do without having to actually take out your iPhone or resort to, let's say, smartwatch control. And I gotta tell you, this was a bit of an aha moment for me in those moments when I found myself lying down in bed, listening to a YouTube video or a podcast and the phone was out of reach. Compare that to many other truly wireless earbuds that don't even have volume control or other gestures, or maybe they sequester certain controls to certain sides. But with these, you have all of those controls, everything that you might want to do in either earbud. So if you're like me and you you wear one bud all the time, you don't lose any functionality by switching. By the by, the earbuds can last up to six hours when listening, and they get charged up four more times in the case for like 30 hours total. That seems about right to me, and basically extended because I'm just wearing one earbud at a time most of the time. A quick note on smart functions, namely Siri. I don't really use Siri on demand pretty much ever, but I will admit that the notifications being read through the AirPods Pro 2 have been kind of nice. In my case, it's useful for telegram and messages, so when I'm out on those long walks, my audio content just gets interrupted for a little bit while Siri reads the message, after which time I can decide whether or not I want to actually go over to the phone or just not do that and keep on my nice stroll. It's not perfect since sometimes it can get stuck on previous notifications that you've left in the notification area and it will repeat them rather than new ones, but it's still pretty handy all the same. This level of functionality does make the case for truly wireless earbuds to put more effort into the like assistant features, pushing them more towards the, let's call it the category of the hearable rather than just being a straight up audio product. The thing is, all of those features do mean that to get the best out of the AirPods Pro 2, they do have to be connected to an Apple device. So yes, the walled garden is still and probably will always be a thing. So for these earbuds, the best experience will come from iPhone, iPad, and MacBook connections. To be fair, you can connect the AirPods Pro 2 to virtually any Bluetooth device thanks to this button on the back, which is always useful on any earbud. And since all of the controls are just on the earbud stems, I don't lose out on the fundamentals. I mainly miss out on things like spatial audio or notification all of which are, in my opinion, kind of non-essential. I just end up coming back to them when I come back to the iPhone, if anything. Now, I'm mentioning all of this as something that didn't work, partially because it's Apple's expected nature, but also because I want more earbuds to reach this level of features and control and smart assistance while supporting more devices. If we can get this level of control in more truly wireless earbuds, then everyone just benefits. And finally, the sound quality. Putting the sound modes aside for now, I will say that the AirPods Pro 2 sound quality is still at the same high level as it was in the previous generation, only slightly enhanced. The full spectrum is represented well, with the lower frequencies providing both the resonance that you want from voices and podcasts, and just enough bass to be enjoyable for a lot of music like hip hop and EDM. There are other earbuds like the Bear Dynamic Freebird and the Sony WF-1000X uh, that actually move me more in the bass department, and the AirPods Pro 2 are just uh, gonna be a little bit lesser in that regard. Higher frequencies don't pierce at high volumes, and the midtones are a little bit dialed back, but they are still perceptible. All in all, the sound spectrum is quite good, and basically where I expect expect Apple tuning to be. But then you add in the updated H2 processor to the mix and Apple's true focus comes into play. So let's start off with noise cancellation. Apple claims that there is up to two times the noise canceled compared to the previous generation. And I'm a little bit hesitant to say that it lives up fully to that claim. I think the noise cancellation on the previous pros was pretty good and they are definitely a little bit better now. Uh, the main things are that like the higher frequency noises, like the clicky sounds of my mechanical keyboard, those are like a little bit more muffled down better. And the usual suspects that I want to block out, like the office air conditioning, those are still removed exactly the way that I would want them to. I have a nice little bubble of quiet around me. It's still great noise cancellation that can be used in multiple scenarios, like during commutes, or maybe for even an added boost of focus during mindfulness practice. What I really like is the transparency mode. 
And by turning on the transparency mode, it's a little bit like uh, being able to take in a breath after you've been holding your breath for some time. Like that's kind of the feeling that I equate that change to, going from noise cancellation to transparency. It's a little bit refreshing. And it also is what makes the H2 processor processing a little bit more obvious. You see, fundamentally, it comes down to a combination of the AirPods Pro 2 features. As long as the physical earbuds are comfortable in your ears, the air vent helps keep away a plugged in feeling, and then the transparency mode just finishes that trifecta. I've alluded to this already, but the AirPods Pro 2 are one of the only earbuds that I can comfortably keep in my ears literally throughout the entire day because it barely gets in the way. I can feel it there, it's unmistakable, but they're so easy to wear for long periods of time. And like I said, the transparency mode is really good, letting me easily hear everything around me, especially when I just have one earbud in. I actually tested this with my go-to pair of earbuds for similar everyday use, the Link Buds S. The Link Buds S and certainly the open design of the original Link Buds are, to me, the gold standard of ambient sound. I put a Link Bud S in one ear and the AirPod Pro 2 in the other ear uh, to find that they're basically equal to me in terms of sound pass-through. But I had to give the AirPod the nod because the vent, the air vent, just adds that little added bit of overall comfort. And while I haven't actually tested this out myself, uh, right here, adaptive transparency. The AirPods Pro 2 will also use the H2 processor to actively lower the decibel levels of especially loud noise that is coming through. So you could wear these in really loud environments and make that environment more comfortable to be in for your hearing. Again, I haven't actually tested this out, but that's pretty interesting. And it makes the AirPods Pro 2 a little bit like smart earplugs. <laughs> Maybe that's not the right terminology, but I think you get what I mean. And actually, on the topic of that adaptive transparency, the whole idea that it would be able to lower the decibel levels of really loud noises, uh, I just realized as we were walking around this area uh, on a pretty windy day that when the wind was really hitting me just right, in a lot of other earbuds, I would hear the wind coming through the ambient sound mode. But on these, I'm barely hearing them. It is not coming through at all. Wind cut. I didn't realize that that would be one of the ways that adaptive transparency would actually work really well. And we can't do an AirPods Pro 2 video without talking about the microphones a little bit. Uh, AirPods are generally known for having really good microphones, so you really shouldn't have any problems when it comes to video calls or phone calls or anything like that. I have certainly used these for that scenario, uh, even just one at a time uh, at certain times. Uh, but yeah, here's what they sound. I'm actually using Photo Booth right now on my MacBook Pro in order to get this clip for you. Uh, so obviously this is what they're going to sound like in that scenario, and your call quality is going to dictate how they sound in those scenarios. So really your mileage may vary a little bit depending on a lot of different factors, but here it is using Photo Booth, recording a video through the microphones. Let me know how you think they sound in the comments down below. Truly wireless audio products are some of those things that I really love as an avid listener of podcast music and YouTube. And when companies that are historically great at sound put out wonderful earbuds or headphones, it's honestly a great time. But then you have the likes of Samsung, Google, and of course, Apple here injecting more like tech in and around just the quality of those drivers. And I think that's where Apple actually succeeds in using the moniker Pro for these. The AirPods Pro 2 actually sound great, but if that's where your line is and you're more of an audiophile, you probably have other pairs that sound better and thus are way more enjoyable for you. But if you're into all of the smarts that a truly wireless earbud can provide, I think Apple is actually adding those levels effectively here. Robust control, smart assistance, and some real thought put into the way noise cancellation and especially transparency mode can add to the experience are all pretty pro moves. And I actually think it's enough to justify the price tag if you're up for using all of those things. Like quite a few of my tech peers, I have the same thoughts around the AirPods Pro 2. Uh, AirPods in general. I love to hate them, but I kind of hate that I love them. But even if people are always noticing the white stick that's always hanging out of at least one of my ears, I have to admit, that's basically the extent of these earbuds intrusiveness. I really just have to give props to a pair of earbuds that work and sound as good as they are at staying out of the way. Are you using the AirPods Pro 2? What has your experience been? You can let me know by sounding off by hitting the like button and by getting into the comment sections down below. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more in the world of truly wireless audio and for my iPhone videos, hit the videos that are appearing right now on the screen. From there though, I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again today. Please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea, everybody.